four weeks through the 2013 fantasy football season, and it's a, the quarter point of the season, and it's a good time to really uh, figure out where you are and where you want to go and how you're going to get there. Now, if you're 0-4 right now in fantasy football, have no fear. Your season is not over. I've got 10 steps here in this video to help you at least save your season, make it respectable, and maybe even surprise yourselves a little bit. Now, before I talk about those 10 steps, there's a couple of general things to keep in mind. Number one is even if you're 0-4 right now, don't give up. You still have another nine, maybe ten weeks of regular season stuff before you even get to the fantasy football playoffs. There's still a lot of season left. I've seen on numerous, numerous occasions over the years, people that started off their fantasy leagues 1-3, 0-4, come back and win fantasy championships. It happens all the time, every single year. So just because you're sitting 0-4 right now doesn't mean your season's over. It just means you need a new beginning. It's important to assess your position in the standings and where you're sitting and why you're sitting there. Now, if you're 0-4 and you've run up against, let's say you played somebody that had Peyton Manning in week one, and you've run up against a couple other teams' monster weeks, maybe you're 0-4 and sitting in like last place in a 10-team league, but maybe your team has scored the third or fourth most points, but you look at it, you've given, you've had the most points scored against you. Well, those law of averages are usually going to balance out. You've had run up against some monster weeks. Now maybe you are going to put up a couple of monster weeks. And as a result, you're going to play some teams that won't do so well. And you'll get back on the winning track very quickly. Now if you're in last place and your team has scored the least amount of points, um, then you deserve your position. But again, keep in mind that there's still a lot of fantasy season left to go. Now, a lot of people during the course of a fantasy football regular season focus a lot on the individual week-to-week -week matchups, and they look at the standings and where they rank in those standings. I want to be first or the second, whatever the case might be. Your strategy, again, assuming, let's say, a 10-team league, where you either have six teams make the playoffs or eight teams make the playoffs. If you're sitting in last place right now in 10th, who gives a shit about trying to climb up to number one or number two or number three? Because you're probably not going to get there anyways. And nor is that particularly important. All you need to do is come up with a new strategy that is all about getting ahead of those couple of teams ahead of you in the standings and making your fantasy playoffs. Because as long as you make your fantasy football league's playoffs, you have at least some semblance, some sort of a chance to win a fantasy championship. Your entire strategy now is not about worrying about this guy or this guy at the top. You'll have to beat them later on in the fantasy playoffs. You've got to structure your team to where it can be built to have some success in the middle portion of the season and at least get you into the top six in your league, and that way you're clearly made the playoffs. Most importantly of all, above all else, the most important thing to do is not time to panic. It's a time for action. Just because you're on four, your season's not over. And most every single league, there are all types of moves that can be made, trades, uh, waiver wire acquisitions, whatever the case might be. So if you really care about fantasy football and you're frustrated by your 0-4 start, I'm going to give you now 10 steps to help save your season for this year in fantasy football. Number one, look at the strengths and weaknesses of your team. Let's cut through the bullshit. If your team is 0-4 right now, even if it's in the scenario I talked about where you have the third or fourth most points in the league, but you've run against some monsters, the bottom line is your team may have a couple of strengths, but it definitely has some weaknesses. You have by no means been a fantasy football god, and you need to be realistic. And the only way you're going to improve your standings and get any better and have a chance of contending for the playoffs, contending for a fantasy championship, is assessing where your team is good, and in more likely cases, where what areas you need to address in terms of weaknesses. Number two, if you have a backup quarterback, a defense special teams on the bench, and a kicker on the bench, cut every last one of them, unless your league specifically requires that you have to have those positions filled on your bench like that. Those are wasted roster spots. Let's say you have Drew Brees as your starting quarterback, but your backup quarterback is somebody like, let's say, Joe Flacco. Oh, the logic I'll hear is, I've got to cover the bye week. No, the fuck you don't. Most leagues only start one quarterback. There are going to be quarterbacks available in a bye week pinch that you can pick up on the waiver wire. Do not waste a roster spot for a damn near an entire fantasy football league season because you want to have that quarterback for Drew Brees' fucking bye week. 
Same thing with the team defenses. Chances are you're trying to sit there and outthink yourself and outmaneuver yourself and play the matchups from week to week when there are going to be team defenses available on the waiver wires that could do the same thing for you, if not more. Don't waste that weekly roster spot on a second team defense. It's the same thing with kickers. Kickers are a dime a dozen. Why in the hell would you waste a roster spot on a backup kicker? Usually, usually the people that have the philosophy of having a backup kicker and a backup defense and a backup quarterback, wasting three roster spots like that, they're surprised when at the end of the season they miss the fantasy playoffs and they're in last place. They, they don't get it. Well, that's why. You're wasting crucial, critical, vitally important roster spots on wasted positions. You don't need a backup quarterback. You don't need a backup defense. You don't need a backup kicker. You need things like backup running backs and wide receivers and tight ends. So if you've got any of those extra positions, quarterback, defensive, special teams, kicker, cut them. Number three is incredibly important. Don't marry yourself to anyone. If you've got a favorite player of yours on your fantasy team or they play for a favorite team or whatever the case might be, the most important thing at this point when you're 0-4 is trying to secure a place in the fantasy football playoffs for your league. You don't need to worry about loyalties. You know, if you're a Bear fan and you've got Jay Cutler as your starting quarterback, but maybe there are better options that are available to you either via trade or via free agency, the waiver wire, don't stubbornly cling to Jay Cutler because you're a Bear fan because it's the right thing to do. If you've gone 0-4 with him as your starting quarterback, that may be a part of the problem. The point being, don't marry yourself to anyone. Be willing to potentially get rid of anyone and everyone to help your team if that's what you need. Why? Because you're 0-4 for a reason. You shouldn't have any loyalties to any damn buddy on your team. Everybody should be on the block. Everybody should potentially be able to be cut. You know, whatever the case might be. Even shitty fantasy football teams usually will have one or two studs. One or two. Sometimes two. And if you're in this position and you've got one or two absolute studs, let's say you've got Adrian Peterson at running back and Julio Jones as your wide receiver. Those are two, you know, established studs. This is where I go back to step three. Don't marry yourself to anyone. Take those one or two studs and trade them for depth. Get multiple players for them. Somebody's going to be in love. A really good team is going to be in love with the concept of having an Adrian Peterson. You maybe could take an Adrian Peterson and turn him into somebody like a DeMarco Murray and maybe a Torrey Smith. So if you're 0-4, chances are you have weaknesses both at running back and wide receiver in terms of your depth on your roster. Now you've taken AP. You've given up, yes, a big-time player, but you've gotten two guys with some point potential in Murray and Torrey Smith. Same thing with Julio Jones. You turn him around, and maybe you get somebody like a Deshaun Jackson and a Giovanni Bernard. Again, getting you more depth. So if I'm sitting there as a fantasy owner, I've got Julio Jones, I've got Adrian Peterson. I would much rather have, at this point in time, especially considering I'm 0-4, I would much rather have DeMarco Murray, Torrey Smith, Deshaun Jackson, and Giovanni Bernard, because I need depth. I need more chances to score points. Instead of relying on these two star players who have given me a bunch of points already but still have me 0-4 anyways, now I've got the potential for four different guys instead of two to provide me monster weeks, and I'm getting more overall production out of my roster. That's why it's so important to not marry yourself for, to anyone. If you're 0-4, you've probably got one or two studs. You've got to be willing to trade them especially if the deal adds some depth to your roster. I talked earlier about cutting any backup quarterbacks or kickers or defenses that you had on your bench. Part of the reason is if you're on 4 you might be in a league where people aren't all that willy-nilly willing to trade with you. You're going to have to hit that free agent and waiver wire very hard. You know, most teams that win a fantasy championship don't stay intact from the draft throughout the course of the year. You have to make waiver moves. You have to make free agent moves, whatever the case might be. You need to look at the waiver wire and go for wide receivers for now because chances are the running back list is relatively depleted in your league, but you can always find wide receivers that could come in and produce double-digit points in given weeks, which is obviously going to help you again in part because you're 0-4. So you're looking at that waiver wire. Some of those spots you've freed up from not wasting them on backup quarterbacks and kickers, and you're getting wide receivers that have the potential to start for you either as a wide receiver or maybe as a flex position and give you double-digit points. And while you're trying to add wide receivers for now and for later to help you, 
You should be also looking at running backs for later. Like I said, right now, chances are you're not going to find a lot in terms of instantly productive running backs on your fantasy football league's waiver wire. But sometimes it happens. Sometimes running backs slip through the cracks, people in your league aren't paying attention, and you've got a chance to swoop in and get somebody. But you should be looking at those running backs for later, meaning those guys right now that are backups, maybe they're rookies or younger guys, whatever the case might be. They're not getting a lot of opportunities, but they show some flashes, so show some ability to produce when they do get in because maybe as the season goes along, you're in that position where these guys are starting to get more and more tick, and they might even be starting for their team. And now all of a sudden, you held on to that guy for a few weeks, and now he's coming in and producing double-digit 15, 20-point games for you as a running back or as a flex position player, somebody who you hadn't even contemplated at the time of your fantasy football league's draft. Number seven, avoid having people with bye weeks in your starting lineup. Seriously, this aggravates me a lot when I see people playing fantasy football. You know, just because you're one in three, zero oh and four, doesn't mean you need to stop trying. It takes seriously like five minutes or less to set your fucking lineup. Set your damn lineup. Avoid bye weeks, especially right now if you are zero oh and four, one in three even. But especially zero oh and four, you need every possible avenue for points you could possibly have. Why would you lose an entire position for a week because of somebody's bye week? Why would you keep them in the lineup or not find a replacement for them in the lineup? You need every damn point you could get. So please, avoid bye weeks in your starting lineups. Manage your damn rosters. Number eight, watch for other people's bye week mistakes. And what I mean by that is maybe you've got somebody that has a really good team, but they're trying to get that top seed in the league, or they're a middling team and they're trying to make a move up. And what will happen is, is maybe they had somebody on their bench like a Steven Jackson or a Percy Harvin or somebody along those lines, maybe even a Rob Gronkowski. Shit, you never know. Every year you'll see somebody drop somebody out of the blue in a bye week panic because they're trying to fill a spot. So they cut this guy that's hurt, that's going to be a productive player when they come back healthy, and you could benefit tremendously from that. Just think about that. Now, Steven Jackson was drafted in the first and second round in a lot of leagues this year. Why? Because people were idiots. However, however, if you're sitting there and you're in last place, you're 1-4 right now, you have to take a gamble that if somebody cuts Steven Jackson because he's going to still be out for a few weeks, that he could be a running back two for you that you wouldn't have been able to get otherwise. You know, the potential is there for it to tremendously help you. Same thing with the Percy Harvin down the road. Pay attention to those bye week mistakes when people cut people to cover a bye week and you could benefit from it tremendously. Watch your lineups according to the matchups and the injury reports. Pay attention to the injury reports. If you don't think the guy's going to play or be very productive, then don't put him in the damn lineup. Look at the matchups. If you've got, let's say, you have somebody like a Cecil Shorts. He's one of your three wide receivers, but maybe they were going to play the Arizona Cardinals and he was going to face Patrick Peterson. Not a good matchup. You know, pay attention to those things. That's maybe a guy even with a certain name that you sit for a given week. If you get what I'm saying here, pay attention to the matchups. See, there's no excuse not to pay attention to the matchups because you go like on Yahoo, they've got that little notebook thing you click on, and it'll tell you the matchup. It'll give you the stats. It gives you an idea. It helps guide you on that path. It also tells you about the injury reports and their progress as a player throughout the week. So set your lineups according to the matchups and according to the injury reports. Number 10, we've done all these other things, so it's going to be very important to stay the course. You've made a plan, you've executed your plan, now it's time to stick with it. If you lose in week five, it's not the end of the world. Because again, like I mentioned before, your strategy is not to try and get to the number one or number two position in your league. Because in most leagues, let's say a standard 10-team format, most leagues you're going to have you know, six to eight teams make the playoffs. As a result, if that's the case... You don't need to beat everybody. You just end up needing to be better than, you know, maybe two teams or four teams, whatever the case might be. All that matters is that you get into the fantasy football playoffs. If you do some of these steps, if you effectively look at your strengths and weaknesses as a team, you cut people that are wasting roster spots, you don't marry yourself to anyone, you take some of the studs you may have and turn them into more depth that you need. You focus on the waiver wire with wide receivers that can help you now and later. Focus on those running backs that could step in later on in the year, especially around fantasy football playoff time and be big time point producers. You do these things, you manage your roster, you avoid bye weeks, look for other people's bye weeks mistakes. You know, pay attention to matchups and the injury reports. You do all these things and you stick with it. You're going to see results. I guarantee it. 
I guarantee it. And it's going to be at this point in time that you turned your season around and went from 0-4 to maybe you go like 7-6 and or 8-5 and or whatever the case might be. But you actually make your league's fantasy football playoffs. And once you get there, obviously if you start off 0-4 and you ended up going like 7-6 and or 8-5 and to get there, that means you were very hot during the middle portion of the season. People aren't going to want to play you come the fantasy football playoffs, I promise you. You might be 0-4 now, but you do some of the things that I've outlined in this video. You do all 10 of these steps. It is going to help you save your season, no question about it.